It's become something of a tradition at I2 to create a tutorial that uses RailClone to build a Christmas tree. As most people know though, RailClone isn't a botanical modeler, so we've had to use our imaginations. Last year, we created trees made of pipes that looked like they'd escaped from some sci-fi dystopia. This year, we're keeping it classy with trees inspired by the minimalist designs of Johannes Merlin. There are no needles to drop on this tree, it's constructed from blocks stacked one atop the other. Each block can be incrementally scaled and rotated to create distinctive but recognisable shapes. The tree is fully parametric and editable from the modifier panel with controls for height, block size at the top and the bottom, pivot point, rotation angle, base size and much more. So let's get started. The geometry required for this tree is very simple. It's just a couple of boxes for the base and the branches and a star for the top. The style itself uses two generators, one for the base, trunk and star and a second one solely reserved for the branches. We'll start with the simpler of these two and create just the core of the tree. So create a new rail clone object and open the style editor and then add an L1S array. Because this tree will always be straight, there's no need to use a spline to define the path for the array. Instead, we'll use the generator's X size property. But to make this value editable from the modify panel, export it by right clicking on the generator and choosing export parameters, geometry, X size. Then create a new numeric node and wire it to the newly exported X size parameter. Rename the numeric node tree height so it's easy to identify. The size of this array can now be edited using the parameter. A value of 1.5 meters is a good starting point. So we'll start at the bottom of the tree with the base and then work our way upwards. Create a new segment and set the alignment Z property to center. This will align the segment correctly so that it's centered on the trunk of the tree. From the properties rollout, pick the base geometry from the scene, it's just the box. At the bottom we'll also include a wooden block into which the metal pipe that forms the trunk is inserted. To add this, clone the existing segment and select the block geometry from the scene. And then to add both the base segment and this block to the start input, you use a compose operator. Wire the base segment to the first input of the compose operator and the block to the second. And then wire the compose operator itself to the generator's start input. As you can see here, the array is being built horizontally, but obviously the tree should grow vertically. So there's no need to make things too complicated, just rotate the whole rail clone object by 90 degrees. And now we're ready to add the trunk. Clone an existing segment node and use it to pick the trunk geometry from the scene. Wire this node to the default input. At the moment this geometry repeats along the array. But if we select the generator and change the rules default default mode to scale, we'll stretch a single segment between the start and the end of the array, which is more efficient. Now clone another segment node and use it to select the star geometry from the scene. Wire this segment node to the end input. You can now adjust the tree height parameter to see the size of the tree updating. Let's add some more parameters to make the size of the base easy to adjust. Select the base segment and export fixed scale X, Y and fixed scale Z. Then create a new numeric node, change the mode to percent and wire this to the Y and the Z inputs. Create a second numeric node, again set the mode to percent and wire it to the Z scale input. Make sure you rename both numeric nodes so that their function is easy to identify. These parameters allow you to control the width and the depth of the base geometry from the modify panel. We can also do the same for the star segment. Export the X, Y and Z fixed scale parameters and wire them all to a new numeric operator. The core of the tree is now complete and easy to adjust with an editable height, base size and star size. So to add the branches, we'll use another L1S generator. Start by cloning the existing generator and removing all the inputs. This can save you time as many of the existing settings will remain the same. Change the new generator's default mode to adaptive. This will ensure the topmost branch is not sliced. Clone one of the segment nodes again and use it to pick the branch geometry from the scene. Wire this to the default input and the branches will appear. 
but as you can see they currently use the full height of the array overlapping both the base and the star at the top and bottom. They should only fill in the area between the base and the star. So to fix this we we'll use a feature called generator limits. These allow you to shorten the length of the array using a set measurement from each end. These parameters are available in the generator limits tab but to control the values parametrically both values will need to be exported by right clicking the generator and selecting limits padding start and limits padding end. These values will be driven by the X size of the base and the star. To expose these attributes, right click on the compose operator and the star segment and select export attribute size X. Then wire the compose operator's X size attribute to the generator's padding start input and wire the segment's X size to the padding end input. The branches will now start in the correct places between the star and the base. So the branches are now in the correct part of the tree. The next step is to parametrically control their rotation and scale. That's really what this tutorial is all about. The festive theme is just an excuse to sneak in a bit of training about expressions. There are two ways parameters can be controlled incrementally. Firstly, using a segment count. This is the easiest way because it returns a simple integer that can be used to multiply any value. Alternatively, the segment's position in the array can be used. This returns a scalar value between 0.0, .0 at the start of the array and 1.0 at the end. This too can be used as a multiplier to generate a value that gradually increases. Either one of these two approaches is perfectly fine, but there are a couple of advantages and disadvantages. Using segment count is going to be much easier, but the value on the final segment is going to be dependent on the total number of segments in the array, so it isn't particularly predictable. Using the segment position is harder to set up, but it does produce predictable results with absolute values that can be set for the start and the end of the array. The next part of this tutorial will demonstrate how to use the segment count method to control rotation, and it will use the segment position method to control scale. So to rotate the branches, expressions can't be wired directly to a segment's properties. Instead, a transform operator must be used. So wire a transform operator in between the existing branch segment and the default input and then right click on the transform operator and export Y fixed rotation. Create a new numeric node and rename it angle. This will be the rotation between each branch. Create a new arithmetic node, wire it to the Y fixed rotation input, wire the numeric node created in the previous steps to the arithmetic node's first input. It should look like this. OK, so it's time for some maths. Select the arithmetic node and change the operation type to expression. This will allow you to open the expressions editor by clicking the edit expression button. In the expressions editor on the left hand side you can see there's a list of rail clones built in variables and then below that are all the available functions. You can either type these manually or you can double click on them to add the expression. For example, to add a segment counter variable go to the variables list open the segment submenu and double click on segment X counter. Notice as well that there's help text that displays in the lower text box to help you use these commands. This segment count needs to be multiplied by the value contained in the angle numeric node already wired to the first input. If you want in your expression to refer to nodes connected to inputs, you use the variable input and then the number. So for example, to complete this expression you would use segment X counter times input one. Now this is done, if the angle's value is increased, the branches incrementally rotate. So next, the size of the branches needs to decrease as they ascend the tree. The second expression creates a fixed scale for the start and the end of the tree, so that the size of the branches are the same whether the tree is 1 meter or 100 meters tall. To do this, we use the variable x spline position. As I mentioned, x spline position returns a value between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 based on the segment's position along the array's path, although this works even if you're not using a spline. This can be used to multiply any value so that it gradually increases. The full equation works by calculating the difference between the start and the end scale value, multiplying this by the x spline position, and then adding it to the start value. Therefore, if input 1 is the end value and input 2 is the start value, the expression looks like this on screen at the moment. To add this to the existing graph, create another transform operator and wire it before the existing one. 
This is because if the segments are scaled using the same transform operator that's performing a rotation, they will be scaled after the rotation operation and this causes unwanted deformation. Right click on the new transform operator and export Y fixed scale. Wire a new arithmetic node to the Y fixed scale input and change its operation to expression. Create two new numeric nodes, call one scale at top and wire it to the arithmetic node's first input, call the other scale at bottom and wire it to the second input. And then select the arithmetic node, open the expressions editor and enter the equation we just looked at, which is open bracket, open bracket, input one minus input two, close brackets, multiplied by x spline position, close brackets, plus input two. And now if you adjust the two numeric nodes, you can create branches that gradually decrease in size, but with a fixed start and end point irrespective of the tree's height. So in the style as we have it, each branch is centered on the trunk. What if an option is needed to rotate the branches from an end point instead? Well to do this, a switch can be added that does two things. It changes the pivot that's used, and it halves the scale value so that the tree retains the same proportions. To do this though, first off we need the switch. Selector operators are used to select from different inputs based on a numerical index. In the tree object, the first index will be a segment with a centered pivot, the existing geometry, and the second uses a pivot at the end of the branch. In the scene, if you look at the source geometry, you'll see that this pivot has already been placed correctly. Next we'll create a new selector node and wire the final transform operator in the chain to the first input. Wire the selector operator to the default input. Then create a new transform operator. Turn on pivot and change alignment Y and Z to pivot. Wire this to the selector operator's second input and connect the transform operator together like this. Export the selector operator's index property and wire it to a new numeric node. Set the type to boolean and call it centered. Toggling this option will now alternate between the branches centered on the trunk and the branches aligned at the end. This works well, but as you can see, when the branches are aligned to the end, they are twice as large. To remedy this, it's necessary to halve the scale values if the branches are aligned to the end. So to do this, create another arithmetic operator and wire it just before the transform operator that's controlling the scale. Wire the existing expression to this transform operator's first input and wire the centered boolean to the second input. Use the arithmetic operator to create a conditional expression by opening the expressions editor and entering if open bracket input 2 equals 0, comma, input 1 divided by 2, halving the value, comma, input 1. If statements work by testing to see if the first statement is true. If it is true, the command returns the first value, input 1 divided by 2, and if it's false, it will return the second, input 1. So now if you toggle the center parameter, you'll see the overall profile of the tree is retained while the pivot changes. And finally, to finish up, we'll add a parameter to create a sequence of materials. Wire a material operator to the default input and wire the selector to the material node's input. Change the material operator mode to sequence and export the two property. Wire a new numeric node to the two property and rename it number of materials. This node will now create a looped sequence between material ID 1 and the value set in this numeric node. And this completes the Christmas tree style. So this style may not be used every day by many people, but the techniques demonstrated are extremely useful for learning how to use expressions to make incremental changes to parameters, as well as how to make objects easy to edit from the modify panel. This is ideal for sharing rail clone styles with other users or in studios where you may have a rail clone champion producing styles for others to use. The tree is a great example. It has parameters to rotate branches, set a scale for the start and the end of the array, create sequences of material IDs, resize the base segments and the star, and of course change the overall height of the tree. It's surprising using these few settings just how many variations you can create. Thank you for watching. This is our final tutorial for 2016. We hope you'll join us in the new year for lots more training and case studies, but above all else, we wish you a happy holiday.